Hi, I'm DC Brakes, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be exploring database AI, which offer a range of AI-based tools that really allow you to manipulate, edit, and otherwise mangle audio in some pretty new and interesting ways. So without further ado, let's jump on in and take a look at database AI. So this is the Database AI website. As you can see, it is in beta at the moment, so presumably it's still being developed, um, but you can use it for free to start with. They do have some paid for uh, packages, but if you wanna get started, uh, you can jump in straight away and use some of the tools that it has. So it has these five tools, which you can see on the left here, a lyrics engine, audio to audio, splitter, text to audio, and vox style. And we're gonna take a look at each of these and how we can use them to come up with some original creative ideas. So we're gonna start by testing out the splitter. And this um, is a tool for uh, removing different stems from a piece of audio. I'm gonna feed it one of my tracks called We Never Slow Down, which features a vocalist called Eva Lazarus. It's a drum and bass track, so it's gonna be quite challenging for it to sort of pick out uh, the vocal cleanly, but we'll see how it does. Unlike other AI tools that I've explored on this channel, it doesn't give the ability to choose which stems you want. It will just automatically split it into six stems for the uh, vocal, drums, bass, guitar, piano, and other. It also doesn't, at the moment, have the ability to download those in any other format other than MP3. Now, sometimes when it's working, you'll get this kind of task queued and it will just sit there uh, and freeze. It looks like it's working for now, but if you come to your files uh, tab on the left here, it will place all of the stems uh, in here as you kind of go along. So if it does freeze, quite often it has actually worked. Um, so you just need to go and check in the files folder. So let's have a quick listen to the tune and then hear how well or otherwise it's done in terms of pulling out uh, some of these different vocal parts. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, check out the vocal stem. If you put me in that mood, don't tell me that I'm cold. I already know. Tell you what you can do, tell me something that I don't. One your people in a big friend. So you can hear some of the other sound effects and things have kind of leaked through, but that otherwise is pretty clean. It's done quite a good job. Let's have a look at the drop section here where it's fighting with the drums. Probably not gonna sound quite as good. So it's done a pretty good job, but you can kind of hear where it's pulled the drums out. It's kind of left these almost holes uh, in the vocals. Let's listen to some of the other stems. Pretty good, you can hear kind of the lead melody in there, but that's not too bad. What about the bass stem? And that's done a pretty good job on the bass stem. So if we want to grab that vocal, for example, we can just hit download and that will download it. And as I said, it is at the moment limited to MP3 format and quite a, uh, a lossy one at that. Let's look at Vogue style next or Vox style. So the way this works is that we can upload a vocal um, this could be yourself. I'm not brave enough to sing on camera because I'm a terrible singer, so I'm going to use that vocal stem uh, that I've just created, even though it's going to be a little bit kind of glitchy because of the uh, extraction process that we used in the splitter just now. And then we can choose a different voice model and it will try and translate our vocal that we upload into one of these models. So they've got Lady Gaga, Ariana Grande and so on. Let's choose Don Tolliver, it's a US rapper. We've got a pitch control here. So this is a numerical value in semitones. So uh, if we leave it at zero, it will translate it kind of pitch for pitch, uh, but you can obviously experiment with different settings as well. The more extreme you go with the pitch, uh, a little bit like in a DAW, the pitch shifting becomes more sort of audible and less uh, sort of realistic, if you like. So let's call this uh, Revox. I can choose a WAV. Uh, let's upload that uh, first. You can see that whole stem is only four megabytes. So it is quite a low sort of quality uh, stem and generally uh, my feeling on a lot of these tools is that because of the kind of lossy quality audio you get it is more experimental not necessarily super professional tools and I'm also not sure if they have 
um, permission to use these voice models from these particular artists? I suspect not. So it may be that they're not actually able to commercialize this. I don't know. But um, we'll try it out for now anyway and see how it works. Okay, it's finished. Let's have a listen now to We Never Slow Down, but vocaled by Don Tolliver instead. And no one took my answer, you put me in that mood Don't tell me that I'm cold, I already know Tell you what you can do, tell me something that I know Why you keep holding me in a big brain You take me by idiot, tell me still chain So that is actually pretty scarily good It actually sounds pretty usable um, now, whether you want to create like a, a remix or if you want to use this as a harmony, perhaps for a uh, vocal in your own tune, that could be something else that you could consider as well. Uh, or it might just be that, you know, if you're a fan of one of these artists, you want to create a song uh, that kind of sounds like them as well. OK, let's go ahead and uh, download that one. OK, so the next tool we're going to look at is the lyrics engine. Uh, and as you might suspect, this is an AI assistant that can help you with lyrics. So you just type in the lyrics that you want. I'm just going to um, paste in the first line from uh, We Never Slow Down and hit send. And then what it'll do is it will just kind of continue the lyrics for you. So um, here we go. It's now like spitting out something. And what it will do as well is it will quite often give you um, a sort of a little um, a sort of summary, if you like, of the style um, of the lyrics. So here you, say, you can see it says, lyrics can be very personal, so feel free to adjust these as you see fit. I've tried to follow the theme of resilience and strength that you've established in your, your initial lines. So what it does is it sort of looks at the lyrics that you put in, tries to ascertain a theme from those, and then uses that for generating the uh, vocals, uh, the lyrics, so that they are connected in some way. So that could be a really useful tool if you are a singer-songwriter or you're trying to come up with some top lines and you need some inspiration. Okay, let's move on now and look at the audio to audio engine. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the content. Just to let you know that we offer online courses in a range of creative subjects. So if you're interested in taking your skills and knowledge to the next level, check out the link below. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna upload the, uh, that Revox file uh, that we got. So this is the uh, re-vocal uh, sample of the uh, vocal stem, but sung by Don Tolliver. And now I'm going to give it a description we also have a negative prompt, which is kind of like telling it what we don't want it to sound like. But let's put in here 80s synth uh, chords uh, mellow, something like that. You need to put in the uh, start time. So um, it might be that you want to start from you know, a particular part in this file. This one's obviously quite a long stem, but let's start. In fact, let's not start from zero because there's a little bit of kind of nothing at the beginning. I think around 11 seconds is when the first uh, bit of vocal properly kicks in. Um, again, we've got a choice of output formats. And what this will do, it will use the training data, whatever you know, music they've used to train their models, and it will kind of infer a new piece of audio based on the uh, input that we give it. In other words, this revocaled voice. I'm just going to keep it on 10 seconds for now, uh, but you can do up to 30. Uh, and let's hear uh, what it comes up with. So we hit mix and it will now um, mix our, our vocal with some audio from its um, training data. And generally it works quite well because it will kind of match the rhythm and the key quite often and some of the kind of details. Uh, let's hear what it's done. So there's obviously some parts where the vocals are silent, so that's why we've got some silence, but let's hear what we've got. So um, in this case, it's obviously used a piece of audio that was um, some kind of 80s-ish vocal, it sounded like, almost Freddie Mercury-esque. And it's kind of generated um, almost like another vocal, actually, rather than the kind of synthy kind of chords. But that could be quite cool. It's certainly not something I couldn't create myself in any other way. So this can be quite a useful tool for generating weird and unusual audio. It does have a particular kind of sound to it. Um, which I think is almost a kind of a sound that we might start hearing more and more in music, this kind of artificial intelligence sound of kind of weirdly blended music. So we'll download that one. Again, uh, all the audio that it makes 
does get populated into this uh, files menu. So you can see anything that we've made so far will appear here for us to grab uh, later on. Let's try generating um, and something else. Let's go for um, uh, let's go for a dub baseline uh, heavy um, guitar something like that and um, see what that comes up with. I'll give someone call it bass. Now this process in my experience can be really hit and miss. Sometimes you get some gold, sometimes you just get some weird stuff and one thing it does seem to do when it's resynthesizing a lot of these um, sounds it tends to use some kind of processing that makes it sound almost like a resonant comb filtery type of thing on there. Let's hear what it's done this time. <laughs> So you can see it's actually the exact same pattern as what we had before. It's used the same sample, but it's kind of output it in a different way. It doesn't sound like a bass. It does sound a bit like a guitar. Um, and so I have some question marks over how this model actually works. So anyway, it's a fun and kind of experimental tool that you can kind of use. Um, but as I said, some of the audio can be like not really that usable. Uh, which I think is the case with most of these AI tools that we have at the moment. Okay, so then finally, let's look at text to audio. So the text to audio tool, as you might expect, is quite straightforward, uh, self-intuitive. You just type in the kind of audio that you're looking for. So once again, let's go for some 80s synth mellow, oops, if I could type correctly, mellow uh, chords, something like that. We've got a choice of output formats. And we'll just call this chords, hit generate. Um, but Again, particularly you'll hear it a lot more clearly in this example, uh, as I was just saying, the output sound that we get tends to sound um, almost like a resonant comb filter. It has this kind of um, sort of bit of slightly choppy, slightly delayed kind of feel on it. And it's quite obvious sometimes when it's just taking some music from its training data set and in a way just putting some processing on it to kind of mask it. So as you can hear, it almost just sounds like an 80s tune uh, with some weird processing on it. And this is the problem I have with this particular one. It seems to just take sounds from the, whatever data set it's using, uh, process it to sound a bit mangled, um, and then it kind of returns that. And it's not very uh, useful in terms of generating something that you want. So if I put in um, guitar loop classical, um, uh, let's go for mellow again, um, soft, you know, give it quite a few prompts to work with and hit generate. So again, you can tell that that is guitar and whether or not it's classical guitar um, it is kind of mellow and soft but it has that kind of weird sort of effect on it and it has the same kind of uh, effect no matter what kind of prompts we give it so let's give it piano Chopin um, arpeggio uh, bright energetic uh, hook So this, you know, if you don't mind that specific uh, aesthetic that it creates uh, could be quite useful. And, and again, it might give you some ideas, but the actual audio itself is questionably useful. It's not really that usable in my opinion. So let's have a listen. So there's some nice bits in there that we might wanna use in the song. Um, but the actual quality of the audio um, is not super high. So that's Database AI. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Personally, I think that whilst it's really promising and of course is still only in beta, that there are some genuine question marks around some of the ethical and perhaps even legal issues surrounding 
the modelling on other established artists' voices, which presumably has been done without their permission, and also perhaps some of the training data that's been used for the text-to-audio and audio-to-audio audio -audio applications. That said, I think the technology is only going to progress and this is going to massively shake up the way that music uh, is produced and created over the next few years. So watch this space. If you found the video enjoyable, please hit that like and subscribe button to get more videos like this delivered straight to your inbox from us here at the DBS Institute. But that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.